Yesterday, I was filming a video for a new course that I'm working on for the Luthier's Edge. And in that video, I happened to be demonstrating the final steps of bending a side on a hot bending iron. And I was, I was demonstrating uh, all the different techniques and sort of the strategy that I use to, to really get a perfect, smooth bend and how to get it to fit in a perfect way into the mold so that it's, you know, you put it in here, it really doesn't even need any clamping pressure or anything, it's just a perfect fit. And during the process of uh, discussing that, the topic came up of stress and tension. Now in the guitar, there's stress and tension is sometimes a good thing and sometimes a bad thing. And in the case of the side here, um, I hit a point where I had overbent the waist a little bit and I could for I could have forced it So the waist was I don't know at least a quarter of an inch or more over bent. So like if you looked at it uh, You'd see like a huge gap right here, which now you can see it's a perfect fit But then it was a big gap there because it was over bent and was causing a couple of other issues because of that now I could have stopped there and I could have just taken a turnbuckle clamp or something with a clamping call and I could have just pushed that in and sort of put some clamps on here and by the time I added my neck block and tail block and I use solid linings which are laminated linings and they're very stiff so I could have put those on and I could have sort of locked that in place and just went on with building the guitar. But I didn't and I, I, I make it a point not to do that because this is a case where I don't want to build that extra stress because the true shape of the side is the side that was overbent and didn't match the mold by pushing and forcing it too much. Now, you can, there's a little, you don't have to go too crazy with it. There's a little bit of tension that can be okay and the wood is gonna relax and everything's all right. So you don't have to freak out too much, but this was a case where it was too extreme and it was gonna to load too much tension and stress into the wood because the wood wants a return to its actual shape and its actual shape wasn't yet the shape of the mold like it is now. If I had forced it, that tension would have stayed sort of preloaded into the cells and the wood fiber. And at some point that tension, that stress is gonna to wanna to express itself. It's gonna be looking for a way to get relieved. Um, now that could be in the form of a crack eventually, um, or it could, it could even stay in the guitar, but we run into another problem if the tension that we put in is not a good kind of tension and it can create a situation where as the guitar is trying to respond and make beautiful sounds from the guitar strings, uh, it, it doesn't do as good of a job because there's sort of like this internal conflict happening where there's tension sort of built into different components and they're all kind of competing and interfering with that energy of the string energy that we want to work with and um, just taking ever so subtly away from the guitar being the best that it can be. Um, but so tension and stress is something to be aware of. And that's why I wanted to make this little video here to, to talk about it in the context of, you know, just using the bending of the side as an example, but there's a lot more to unpack um, that we can kind of get into in different applications of this. But if we dig a little deeper below the surface of just the side here and just talk about tension and stress and, and what's going on with that, there are a few different types and it's not always a bad thing. And the, the, the best example of when the tension is actually a good thing is the strings because the tension of the strings when they're tuned up to pitch is the engine that drives the entire system of the guitar. So tension isn't always bad. But the point that I wanted to share with you in this video today and kind of work through in a couple of different, from a few different angles, is to be a little more aware and a little more intentional about when it's important and beneficial to the instrument to avoid building tension into certain areas or certain components of the guitar. And I think just that concept alone is important. To, if you just take that away from the video and think about it as you as you're working and as you're looking at your, uh, the design of your guitar and things like that, it'll really help you to spot a few things. So, um, but I think it'll help if we kind of, if I sort of explain this a little bit more as well. So some tension is good. That could be like the string tension, obviously. Um, a lot of, you know, violin makers, for example, will a lot of times spring fit the bracing to add tension there to, to get some projection. 
Um, and some luthiers do that, and some luthiers don't do that. I actually like to build the guitar in a very relaxed state. And if you're in the luthier's edge, you know that because I talk about that in a lot of our different courses and things. Um, but there are times to put that in. But when you don't want to have tension, there's a engineering concept called stress concentration avoidance. And it's something that when I realize that uh, it really made a change in the way I look at the instrument. And this could be sort of an example of that, is when I went to push that side in, something inside me was like, no, that's too much stress. We want to take some time and we want to fit this so that it's right. We want this at rest here for the stability and the functionality of the guitar to be the best that it can be. So um, let me talk about the stress concentration and stress concentration avoidance and show you just a quick little example because I think this will be helpful and you can take this and apply it to all different areas of, of your guitar. So this is just a little veneer here of maple and I can apply some force, some stress, tension, whatever word you want to use um, to it and I can bend it pretty easily and it makes a really nice even shape because the stress that I just, of tension and force I applied to it is evenly distributed around the perimeter of this. And as long as that's even like that, then this thing can, I guess, call it functioning. It can function well and actually make this nice little circle. But if I were to take it and I were to um, take just a little scalpel or whatever, and I just, I don't even have to make a cut. I can just make a little tiny mark in it just the tiniest little, you can't even probably see it, just a little scratch. And when I go to bend it now, the stress, instead of being evenly distributed, it's gonna have a hot spot. It's gonna have a place where it, it's like water flowing into a puddle. It's gonna pool up and puddle up in that area and be able to focus there, and it immediately snaps. And so this is such an important concept uh, to keep in mind when you are doing your guitar design. This is an important concept to keep in mind. Um, you know, even in applications like we we're talking about with the side, building some extra tension and stress into that waist there could make a place for additional forces to pool up. So for example, let's say I did force this into the position. The guitar might be okay for a while, but then somebody might, be, might uh, own it and there's a specifically very dry winter or something and the guitar side wants to shrink a little because the relative humidity is dropping or something. And just that little bit of extra force that gets applied to it might just puddle up on that spot that was already there waiting. You know what I'm saying? Um, another application would be when you're looking at the bracing of your guitar. Anytime there's an end of a brace, any sharp corners, anything that's similar, just always keep this the way this little scratch was in here, just keep it in your mind. Um, little intersections, uh, any place where there's a point or a sharp area or uh, spots like that are places where the force and tension that's getting applied to the guitar top or wherever can puddle and pool and gather there. And again, it's not always bad. There's sometimes when some tension might be good and you want to build tension to, and you want to control it and sort of move it to a certain area. But there's a lot of times where you don't want it, uh, where it, like real sharp square brace ends can create a pool of tension, a little puddle there to build up a hot spot. And over time that could pop the end of the brace loose or something like that, you know? So when we think about that and we apply it to the design of the guitar and we design and we apply it to how we're building the guitar, it can really help to make uh, a lot of subtle changes, but they add up to something really good, whether it's stability or the quality of the guitar. So I just wanted to make this quick little video to point that part out. And I think that by itself is useful, but um, something that I think about a lot is the other sort of implications of this. And so we can take a couple other steps further with this line of thinking and think about this uh, what would you call it, this feature, uh, this natural tendency of stress to pool up and, and puddle up in these hot spots and cause damage potentially. So one, one layer deeper that we can go is to look at how we build our guitars. Like, so I, I took the time to, I changed the way that I was building this. Well, it's actually the way I always build it, but I could have done it um, you know, and forced it in like that, but I always make it a point to 
get this to relax like I explained. Um, and, but I could have done it a different way, but I changed the way I was building because I was aware of that stress. And there's a lot of other, if kind of zoom out a little further to your actual workflow and the way you're building your guitars, are there places where you have stress building up in those areas? Like are there places in your workflow that can be smoothed out? Are there really difficult spots? Are there spots that slow you down or that, that make you get worried? Like you wake up in the morning and you're like, uh, oh man, I gotta do that today. And you're kind of looking for ways to avoid it. You know what I mean? Um, so those are spots where you can identify um, whether it's an improvement to the guitar design or whether it's just a way to ease some of the stress on you and how you're feeling as you're building. And because, you know, I've had many times before where I had to do something, uh, some operation on the guitar, especially early on, maybe um, things that were loud always bothered me, like cutting the binding channels or something. I would almost be shaking. I was so nervous about trying to do that um, or, you know, things like that. Um, so one thing that I do to do some stress concentration avoidance, loosely using the term here, in this particular application would be, I like to make a plan B for a lot of things, you know? So uh, just to break it down to something simple, let's say that I'm cutting with a chisel and let's say I'm working close to the guitar top or something. And I'm wor I find myself getting a little worried. If I, I feel that stress coming on, like if I accidentally move the chisel a little bit wrong, I could nick the top and ruin it, you know? And that's in the back of my mind and it's taken some of my bandwidth of my concentration away from what I'm trying to accomplish. So why not just take a few minutes and look for a way to diffuse that? It might be taking a little scrap of veneer and maybe a little piece of tape and taping it to the side of whatever I'm chiseling so that if I do slip, I'm just gonna hit that. Now I don't have to worry about it anymore. I can fully focus on what I'm doing. So making, those, making a safe way to make a mistake uh, is a huge, a little workaround or a technique that I use to dis, to diffuse those areas that want to make me stressed. And you can apply that in all different areas of uh, your guitar building process. And then um, the, and these are the things that I think about too. And the reason why this is important, why I'm kind of going these layers deeper is because, you know, we're human beings and part of mastering your craft, whatever it might be, guitar making or painting or whatever, or even writing or, or anything creative, is is endeavoring to master yourself too because it's they're connected you know like if i'm having all these kinds of issues with stress and and trouble that's going to really interfere and in cloud the, the the fear interfere i just realized that but the fear comes in and it clouds things and it makes it so that i can't make the best decisions when i'm building and it makes it so that i can't um uh, I can't be sensitive to what the feedback I'm getting from the wood like I should. And so it's well worth it to me to take time to work on these areas and to avoid uh, or build it. You can't always avoid it. And there's sometimes, like I said, you don't want to avoid it. Like if you go to the gym and you're lifting weights, the stress is helping you build muscles and get stronger. So you want to identify the things that are positive that maybe you just need to get stronger in and it's almost a workout for you in a certain way. And then you want to identify the sort of toxic types that are just sort of making you miserable and preventing you from doing your best work and then look for those workarounds there. And then uh, I guess the last, um, the, well, there's a couple layers, I guess. So the, the second, we'll call it the second layer. I don't really know what number we're on anymore, but the second layer would be, you know, in your life outside of guitar making, are there things that you're saying yes to maybe that you know that you can't do and you're just piling things on that are making you more and more stressed and more and more freaked out. Um, and maybe that could be uncomfortable, but you could say no to and maybe alleviate some of that and, and do some stress avoidance there too, to make a, a life that's just a little more enjoyable, a little more relaxed and it's gonna let you be a little more open and creative and then that's gonna translate into your guitar making work and make you work a little better there too and there, you know, that interconnection of all that. Um, the final layer is what it does to us physically and this is something that I've had to deal with, you know, it's almost 26 years now of professional guitar making. Uh, there's, there's a lot of hard times and a lot of crazy traumatic uh, accidents that happened and things, you know, and you have to deal with 
there's a there's a physical impact and the way i think about it is it's these feelings that we have sometimes in the stress it's some of it's i mean there's a spiritual element but some of it's chemically there's like a physical nature to it you know that actually just like the stress and the tension that i could have forced into this guitar side here would have stayed in there waiting for a way to express itself somewhere down the line sometimes the stress that I'm feeling, the emotions that I'm feeling physically when I'm working, the fear that's that's trying to stop me from doing my best work, can can you know it's a chemical, you know it's a it's an emotion, and it can lodge its way in either physically or it can come out. It can be like an emotional thing too. All that stuff adds up, and it can be just waiting to get expressed later. And so I'm not a psychologist or anything, but <laughs> these are important things. And as you if you're a professional guitar maker, you know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of that kind of stuff. But um, taking the time to think about it in this way and to look for those areas. And when you feel that come on you, to take a breath and to think about it and look for a way to ease it and, and not just sort of override it and push yourself through it and just, you know, hurt yourself with it. You know what I mean? So anyway, I don't know. I think I might be meandering around a little bit at the end here, but... Hopefully this is helping somebody that's watching this um, it, with, you know, to be a little more conscientious and aware of how you're building your guitar from this standpoint, from, this, uh, from the perspective of where you're adding or where you're removing or avoiding stress from building up and tension. Um, and then also maybe apply that and use that as an example to uh, a new lens to look at areas of life, of your guitar building process, and of course your health. I mean, that's the most important thing is to stay healthy so you can continue building your guitars and hopefully enjoy the process a lot more and look for ways to uh, reduce that tension, reduce that internal conflict and um, that resistance so that uh, your life can be more beautiful, the time that you spend in your workshop can be more enjoyable, and of course your guitars can be the best that they can possibly be.